Okay then, welcome back. It's Friday, I've just got home from work. It's time to start playing with that and get the side mount looked at this weekend. Um, all the bits um, have arrived, or at least all the bits I think I'm going to need, um, but I probably won't know until I get quite stuck into it. So uh, yeah, I'll show you what's come and what we're going to do. Um, but uh, oh yeah, first I'll just show you the um, the tank here after the first uh, first coat of paint stripper on it. There we go. So we're down to the uh, well. The all all the blacks come off pretty good. Um, the white is still pretty much untouched. Um, so that might need another another coat. But um, yeah, so the white would be the factory white that they had on there. Um, you can see down here. Bring the camera around. Uh, where are you? There. Um, obviously, they must have sanded off the the decal before they printed it. Um, painted it rather. So, uh, so there's the bare metal under there, flash rusting already. But um, yeah, there we go. But that's for another day. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the side mount stuff. So here we go, goodies galore. Um, we've got a new plate because um, I'm pretty sure the uh, the holes aren't going to be where I want them in the other plate. Um, in fact, I know they won't be. So rather than have ugly holes. For the sake of, I think that was a fiver, got another plate. Uh, side mount you've already seen. Just doing a quick test fit of the, uh, of the um, uh, number plate lights. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so they've arrived. Uh, got some connector blocks as well, um, just in case, um, with a few of the ideas I've got with bastardizing this loom. Uh, the light, obviously, uh, wire, got some heat shrink, and ah, yeah. Now here, I know I was saying I was going to get a bit of alloy and make my own uh, tail tidy, and I was having a little look round, and uh, this British Customs one, um, it's designed so that kind of bolts on as is, and then you've got sort of no bracket for lights or anything, and then there's a range of lights you can decide how you're going to mount on. So this kind of does what I need it to do. Um, it was 27 quid I think and um, you know I was looking around because I, I couldn't find any scraps of Ali um, at work so rather than buy some Ali, cut, cut all the shape out, bend it, drill holes in it, paint it or powder coat it which actually started getting a bit more expensive. This was just an easier, quicker way. And to be honest, you know, working now and all this, um, I haven't got as much time to to be doing stuff like that. So um, yeah, this just seems like the quick and sensible option, um, and the price was right, I think. Uh, so there we go. Um, but I will have to make some sort of bracket for the for the light. Um, just going through my scraps at the moment, just to see what will be suitable but um we'll get to that shortly we'll get the rest of it kind of worked out first so um yeah the first thing i'm going to do is just um strip the rear oh, end i thought I might as well just uh show what's under the seat and uh, what i've got at the moment and uh there we go that is it um so we've got the uh, fender eliminator kit um that's on there at the moment um which is all this unit and that just bolts on with those two there and then there's two torques one there and one there so very easy um, this is the extent of the, the kind of wiring loom at the back here so that's your brake light there and your indicators here so I'm going to try and thin all this down so I've got less bullet connectors um, and just have like a couple of connector blocks I think um, but I'll have a look at that shortly uh, the one thing I've noticed um, I'll just grab the, the British Customs one. And obviously, it goes the other way up, that way. But um, yeah, it's wider actually uh, than that one. So um, yeah, a little bit more under seat protection. I'll get less um, shit flying up through here, which will be nice, really. Um, <laughs> a lot more coming up here though, because I'm not even going to have uh, the number plate or, well mud guard of a number plate that we have over here um, but yeah so I'm just gonna whip 
that off so it is unplug the block connector block there four bolts and that will come off and then we'll stick the other one on there you go and off there we go with it uh, British Customs one installed very nice fit as well actually that one a lot more under seat protection um, so that's cool let's uh, zoom out but uh, yeah started now um, having a little look at the side main and um, I've got some decisions to make um, I've just tried putting it here on the uh, pillion peg exhaust hanger bracket and I quite like it here uh, well it's got I've got pros and cons for there or there um, the pros on this um, it's it seems to be cleaner and less cluttered than when it's there um, and if I wanted to keep the lights here uh, the number plate lights I can't quite keep them with the pre-drilled holes here because they don't really clear the spring it's a bit too close to there I'll show you I'll remount it on here in a minute um, it's sticks out possibly a little bit further because obviously it's going to be mounting there rather than there so I'm out a little bit there I did try moving it on the other side of this bracket but unfortunately I think I'm going to just run into issues with too much of the plate being obscured by the rear shock so that's just uh, asking for trouble I think um, it is pretty much just um, let's get it just in to there with the handlebars which is I don't want anything sticking out further than the handlebars is my usual train of thought that's probably right on the limit um, if I'm sat on the bike and so look so foot's there that's where the plate is so that's it's all right ish um, I'm going to try putting it there. Um, just looking at the two plates, that's the new plate. Um, font's a lot smaller on that one. Um, so if I went with that one on there like that, um, I could have the number plate lights there and there, or I could go there and there. The way this one is, I could even, maybe even, no. Nah. No, I don't like the brake light there. Um, or I could use that one and mount it with the existing screws on there and have them shining down. Not in the best place, possibly. I could probably, I'd probably prefer them a bit higher up. Um, see if I'm, if I'm going to use this here, I might have to actually use these uh, existing holes on here. For the um, number plate lights just to give myself clearance I'll show you what I mean by that I mean one thing's for certain I do like the tail ending there you know and just having that bit of tire sticking out the back that's uh, that has pleased me but let's have a little bit of think of that right let's whip it onto there and see see how that works out and that's it on the rear shock um, so it's in probably I don't know what you reckon about probably an inch in an inch more which I quite like so take a little stand back I do like the I do like it sort of positioned on the pillion peg one though um, and I'll show you what I mean <coughs> in terms of the bolts you see how close that, that, that is literally just there on the spring and the, I mean it's level with the end of the spring and the wires in so I couldn't have that there so I'd probably end up using these existing holes drilling the holes in there and having it like that um, gosh it's a bit of a toughie this one actually uh, 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 uh. I 
do kind of prefer it. Oh, for a US size number plate, eh? I do prefer it here, I think. But it's a shame it's a bit further out. Right, I might have a play around again with just moving it in and see how much of an issue that is. Um, but I do like, I do like it in a little, you know, a little less, a little less width overall and in. But I prefer it forward. But um, I'm not going to be able to have both. I'm going to have to make a sacrifice one way or the other. Nah, and that's not going to fit in there. Uh, just for, from, probably hard to see on here, but just clearance wise, I'm not going to get that. To, don't think I'm going to get that to fit, which is a pain. I might have just got away with that. I don't know, but. I think um, it's a bit tight against the swing arm and that's not a flush fit on the back there either so it's uh, it's going to be on the piss a little bit so yeah the rain is coming down I think Right, I'm just going to stick it on there one more time to have a look. No, that's decided it for me. Looking at it now, especially with the plate on there, that's helped it not just being a black uh, rectangle, but seeing the plate on there, that just sticks out way too far. So, no, it's going to go. Okay, just a little something extra to throw in this video. Um, I've got a the 3M sheet that I ordered, that came this morning uh, for the uh, tank pads. So um, I'm going to try try this out. I'll show you the stuff I've got. Um, it came in a sheet the size that I needed. Uh, it wasn't overly expensive, I think about six quid delivered. Um, which is kind of expensive for something sticky, but um, 3M stuff's usually pretty good. So uh, we'll see if this um, does the job. Um, right, I'll show you what I've got. So here's one I stuck on earlier. Um, this stuff is the 3M 300LSE, whatever that means. Um, so it came in a sheet, obviously a bit bigger than this, double sided. I've taken the tank pad, um, I've cleaned the backs of them with, well, it's not Diet Coke, this is IPA, isopropyl, or whatever it is, I can't ever remember the full name, but a very good cleaning fluid. I'll also use this to uh, clean the sides of the tank before they go on. Um, but yeah, literally just peeled, cleaned it up, peeled that off, stuck that on and um, then just cut around it with a scalpel to get that. So um, yeah, hopefully this will work. We'll see how well they adhere um, and see how well I can get them stuck on straight. So I'll just get that one prepped and um, then we'll go back out into the shed and see if I can get them on the bike. Should have figured just while I've done the second one and just cut that out, um, I'll show you what this kind of stuff looks like. It's uh, like sort of like a, a film, but it's oh shit. <laughs> it's pretty sticky. Um, so yeah, it's got almost that kind of it's like a gluey residue. So I'm hoping that's going to do the job. Ah. Okay then, in the shed now, um, getting ready to clean the tank up with a bit of IPA. Um, there's probably, I want to make sure there's all the, any grease and dirt and stuff off here. Because um, obviously I've cleaned it with a bit of WD-40. I've had a couple of weeks of commuting every day to work. And the last couple of days it's been in the rain as well. So the bike's pretty dirty. So I need to get this at the best possible kind of surface it needs to be. So a little splash of the IPA. And... Um, Let's get this cleaned up, and then the bit I'm really dreading, which is going to be making sure I get these knee pads on straight and symmetrical on both sides. So that's going to really suck. I only bought one sheet of this stuff because it is it's pretty expensive. I mean, 3M stuff is good. Um, it's what we use at work for, you know, 3M for sticking the decals onto a lot of the machinery and stuff. Um, 
it's used, the, this particular one apparently is used for uh, sticking labels onto machinery and you know, high oil, oily areas, etc. Um, it should do the job. But uh, yeah, as I say, I only bought one sheet. Because I don't know for certain if it's going to work. I don't want to spend a lot of money on on something that I'm going to not really use. Maybe I should have bought two, but there we go. Right, now it's looking remarkably cleaner. Let's stick them on. I mean, to be fair, that looks... Um, years ago I had one of the old Daytona 900s. Um, one of the T3 models, I think he called it, and um, I had one of the old retro rubber Triumph tank pads um, up there on that, and that was pretty much came with the same sort of stuff, and that, that stuck on there for, well, as long as I had the bike. Well, that's picking up. It seems quite dark in here. Uh, obviously, it's just blending in quite nicely with the satin on the tank. But uh, cool. I'm happy with the way that one's on. Um, just got to make sure I line the other one up exactly the same way. So I'm a bit OCD when it comes to the symmetry like that. Okay, then there we go. So got them pretty much bang on level. Um, and I just eyeballed it really actually, I didn't even uh, didn't measure something, I, th I thought usually it's better off if you eyeball it, just double check. And they do feel like they've uh, stuck on like, uh, stuck like shit to a blanket really. Um, it's pretty, it's very tight along around there so hopefully that's going to be pretty difficult for anything like fuel or water or crap to get in there and start lifting it off. Um, yeah, so far I am impressed with the adhesion. I think definitely cleaning both surfaces with IPA first makes a big difference. Um, but there we go. That's knee pads on. And uh, for me anyway, uh, that finishes the tank quite nicely. I'm happy. I'm happy. Right, so I had to make a decision. After a bit of uh, head scratching and humming and hawing and pros and cons, we're going for the shock main because it's in a bit closer. I quite like the way it looks there. And I'm going to, well, as you can see, I've drilled two holes there. So I'm going to mount my original plate there. That gives me enough space behind here and doesn't foul the spring for the uh, for the ends of the bolts, uh, which will illuminate the plate and obviously hold it on. Uh, so, yep, so we're installed now. Uh, some stainless countersunk bolts there. I've whacked, um, even though we're threaded in here, I think for extra safety, I've just stuck some uh, nylocks on there and uh, a slightly longer bolt there because I've put in a little spacer behind there just to hold it away from the shock because it would actually touch where this bottom of the shock tapers so that just holds it away I don't know if that's picking up but there is a very it's a about a four or five mil spacer just behind there slightly longer bolt in there as well <coughs> just to take up the difference and uh, talked up so, um, right, we're ready to get the plate on and get the lights in and then start looking at the wiring. So there we go. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. That's okay. In a perfect world, maybe the number plate lights somewhere else, but that's what works. I'm using a side mount that's, uh, that's been designed for something else. Um, so, you know, no complaints here. That all That works for me. So um, the only thing I'm going to try and do now is just have a, I've just temporarily just put stuff up to make sure it's working. Um, I just want to see if there's a way I can kind of connect all this up so it's pretty beef, but also gives me an, uh, gives me the option of um, removing the lights if I need to get the plate off for whatever reason. I don't think that is going to be happening because obviously whatever connects these is going to have to be small enough to get through those holes and I don't think that's I've got anything that's going to do that so um, yeah so that, that's going to take a, a little bit of thinking but um, I think I might get the 
might get the old mount for the rear light and then just get all the the wiring stuff kind of worked out and then we can uh, figure out how I'm going to cut up this loom to uh, make it all work neatly. Right, so I'm trying to get my head around the wiring. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just trying to figure out the neatest and cleanest way of doing it all. So I've drawn myself a little diagram as well, just so I don't get too confused. But that's the main bike loom. And this is the, the harness that I'm going to be making, if you like, uh, on the rear end. So that's the connector block there. So from this connector block, I've got um, two wires going to the left and right indicator. And then I've got three wires here for, uh, one's a ground wire, um, one's a live wire, and one's the brake wire. So those three basically go to the brake light here. Um, so you've got your ground, um, you've got your main illumination light that happens when the bike's turned on, and then obviously when you apply the brake, the secondary light flares up. So off that... I can then use, I've got the two indicators, left and right, so obviously they're going to left and right, but then I've got a black wire off each one to go to ground, so I can probably hook that in to this ground as well. Um, so that's kind of taken that care of that, um, and then I've got the n two number plate lights. This is where I could make it very easy, or I could try and figure out something a little bit clever, um, where I've obviously got the live and the ground for each light, so that's a total of four wires, two blacks, two reds. I could put the two blacks into one, two reds into one, so then they just go into the red and black and they join up with the red, uh, with the live and the ground on this harness as well. If I could try and make that so I can disconnect that um, for the number plate lights and then be able to remove the lights, I don't know why I would need to do that, but just in case, it just makes it easier than maybe having to cut it um, in the future or I might just hardwire it all in um, and just deal with the consequences should I need to change it at any point, who knows. But um, right, so that's the way I've kind of strained it out in my head, but let's let's take you over to the sickle and I'll show you where we're at, at the moment. So just checking, got my length, so obviously that's, this is not the final way I'll be attaching the brake light, that is a little bit crap, but that's just holding it there. So I've sleeved this and put some uh, crimps on the end of the brake light. And here we go, so here's our main harness into the loom. So this is the connector block. So there's the, the three wires, if you like, which will go to the brake light. So black to black, and in this instance, uh, red to blue and yellow to red, uh, which is a little bit confusing, but there we go, just remember that. Um, the two indicator wires, so we've got indicator there, an indicator there, so we can bring all the black wires hopefully together and um, then we've got the number plate light wires down here black and red black and red which I want to try and do somehow um, yeah so it's a bit garbled because I'm just sort of thinking as I go along really but um, I'll keep turning off and then updating as I've gone through it it's, it's a very simple setup but I'm it's more about what's going to be the cleanest way of doing it uh, for me so um, and I'm a bit sleepy, so it's taking me a bit longer. Okay, and so just a quick test here, all the lights are, are on. Um, break. Yeah. Okay then, so everything's hooked up and uh, Rear brakes working. Uh, number plate lights are on when they should be. Um, the bulb on that, oops, that indicator is just blown. No, sorry, that indicator. Um, so I just need to change that. Um, but this one's working as well. There we are. Everything's working as it should be. Albeit slightly crudely put together. But um, we know that the uh, the pattern works, so now it's just to tidy it all up, put proper crimps and connectors on, and make it nice and clean. Okay, then it's so just um, soldering an extra length of wire uh, on the indica um, sorry number plate lights, and then just sleeving it. This will just give me a bit more length to play with. They're they're not very long. Uh, I think about 
10 inches of wire on there which obviously if it's got to go up and under the seat that's not enough so um, just do that and then uh, yeah we're getting closer okay so we're nearly there everything works um, so that's the uh, the plug in and play harness I've just got to do the um, indicator lights um, I'm not entirely sure yet if I want to do get like a, a block let me show you it's like a switch block or one of these for each indicator which I could do but I've had to use one of these pins and that's the only size pin I don't have another one of it's a little bit frustrating because um, I was thinking I could use those maybe they'd be a bit cleaner just to plug in and play on each one seems so click click um, but I want to get some thinner sleeving for the indicator leads as well uh, this is a bit beefy really um, something a little bit smoother so that's going to have to wait until Monday or tomorrow um, for me to get, get out and get the extra bits um, I also need to get um, some more sleeving to finish this yet because that's not even when I run it along the swing arm it's not quite enough to cover the whole thing I'm not entirely happy with this yet I've still got to work out how to make that look neater um, yeah so I need yeah, a little bit of thinking on that um, but I haven't filmed this bit because it is just the same old stuff again but I've just cut out a uh, uh, like an aluminium plate there and I'm just shaping it at the moment so it'll have the light sitting on it um, I've left that bit a bit wider for the light at the moment because I just want to make sure exactly where it's going to go. Um, this is a, you know, like the, probably bolt underneath there. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of play room at the moment to uh, get the height of it. I think, I could, I think it's probably going to go underneath. Um, yeah, it's about there. So, yeah, got a little bit more just refining to do on that. But um, that's probably made up most of the video, I think, for this weekend. So, um, yeah, a bit annoying. Haven't got it all finished. Probably going to have to take Jen's bike to get to work tomorrow. Um, but there we go. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll crack on. I shall have this finished in the next video.